Hey guys, Tech Guy Charlie here. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we are taking a look at Windows Vista and how it holds up in late 2021. We're gonna see what works and what does not. We will also try to browse the internet, check our email, open documents, play music, watch some videos, and maybe try and install some applications. And we'll see how it goes. And at the time of filming this video, Windows Vista is about 15 years old, came out in November of 2006, and it is now November of 2021. So it's been 15 years since its release, and it will be very interesting to see how it holds up, especially now that Windows 11 is out. And I thought it would be best to use hardware from Vista and Windows 7 era. So our test PC is going to be this Acer Aspire from the year 2010. As for the specifications, it's got the first generation Intel Core i5 560M, which is a dual core, 4 thread CPU. And this is paired with 8GB of DDR3 RAM. And Windows is installed on a 256GB SSD. So these are actually pretty decent specifications to run Vista. Unfortunately, no dedicated graphics card on this, so we are stuck with Intel GMA HD graphics. And lastly, we are going to use an external monitor because the built-in display is just way too dim even at max brightness. Now, the installation itself was a breeze. I installed Windows using the original installation DVD. I've got this OEM version of Vista and it's got a slightly different packaging compared to retail copies. And here is the DVD. The one that is inside the laptop looks exactly like this one but has the 64-bit version of Vista Business with Service Pack 1. And look at that beautiful 3D hologram. That looks awesome. And this copy of Vista came as an upgrade for Vista Home Premium for a PC which we bought back in 2007. Yes, this one. But I never really got to use the key on this because Vista Home Premium was more than sufficient for my needs. So we are going to use the key now to activate this copy of Vista Business. And originally, this laptop came with Windows 7, but as you can see, it runs Vista just fine. All of the Windows 7 drivers are compatible with Vista, so I had no issues with the drivers, everything just works. Now, activation was a bit of a chore because Windows just refused to activate online even though the key was unused and totally legit. It kinda gave an error saying a security error has occurred. I don't know what this means, so I chose to activate using the phone activation service and eventually I was able to activate my copy of Vista, no problem. Anyways, intro done, let's start the video. Alright, the first thing I want to do is change that wallpaper. So here we go. Much, much better now. And guys, if you want this wallpaper, the link is in the video's description. Okay, so this is Windows Vista Business 64-bit with Service Pack 2. And we also have all of the latest update packages that were released for Vista installed on this system. So Windows is completely up to date, well at least by Vista standards. So first I'm gonna show you what Vista is still capable of and then I will talk about the limitations and what you cannot do. So, what can you do if your PC is still running Windows Vista in 2021 and 22? Well, to start with the obvious, you can watch your favorite videos. To make things interesting, I'm gonna stream a video of a Windows 10 PC. So there you go. Windows Vista can still access files shared on a Windows 10 PC. This PC can actually play back 4K 30fps videos without having any issues. However, you will need to use a third-party program like VLC because Windows Media Player does not do 4K. Now this is through software decoding because this old PC does not have a hardware 4K decoder. But still, it is very impressive to see such an old hardware playing back 4K footage. And this is the latest version of VLC. It is so nice to see that the open source community still develops and supports VLC for such an old operating system. And speaking of video playback, heck, you can even watch your favorite shows on Netflix. Obviously, I cannot show it to you because that will cause a copyright claim. So I've got no choice to blur out the video, but yeah, as you can see, Netflix does actually work. And so does YouTube. I was able to play back 1080p videos on YouTube just fine. By the way, credits to EEV Blog, awesome channel for electronic enthusiasts. 
You know what? 1080p playback seems to be alright, doesn't feel like it's lagging or dropping any frames. So that's nice. And lastly, you can also check your mail. Gmail opens up just fine. The web browser itself is a little bit laggy, but it kinda gets the job done, which is awesome to see even on such an old operating system. So there you go, Gmail opens up just fine, so you can send and receive your email on Windows Vista without having any issues even in 2021. And speaking of the web browser, this is Firefox version 52.9.0. And no, you cannot upgrade to a newer version of Firefox because newer versions require Windows 7 and above. And this is the only web browser that seems to work on Vista. Every other web browser I tried just refused to work properly. I also tried Google Chrome, but Netflix just refused to work. So yeah, Firefox is the only one that seems to be working right now on this system. Yeah, it's a bit laggy and web browsing kind of sucks on such an old web browser. But hey, my point is it still works, which is awesome. You can also access network shares and play media files that are located on a Windows 10 machine like I'm streaming this music file off my main video editing rig and wow it's been a while since I've seen this visualization. Oh the nostalgia is real. So that was the media side of things. What about Office stuff? Well, we've got Microsoft Office 2010 Standard Edition on this PC. Now, even though it's an old version, it will still open up documents that were created with the latest version of Office 365 without having any issues. So this was a presentation created with Office 365 and it seems like Office 2010 has absolutely no issues opening this thing up. So I don't think there will be many compatibility issues, I might be wrong, but so far so good. And I was also able to take printouts. That means the Windows 10 printer driver is compatible with Vista. So that is awesome. For PDFs, we have Adobe Reader. Again, it's an old version because the newer ones aren't compatible with Vista, but this one seems to work fine for majority of PDFs that I've tried. For editing photos, we've got Photoshop CS5. Ah, the good old days when Adobe did not have Creative Cloud license thing, and if you bought Photoshop, you could keep it for life. So none of that subscription rubbish. Now to edit videos, we've got Windows Live Movie Maker. It's really a bare bones video editing software and these days, your phone probably has a more advanced and a better video editing software on it. And uh, do you guys remember Windows Live Messenger? Oh man, this brings back a ton of good memories. Another feature that I absolutely loved on Windows Vista and 7 was the Windows Sidebar. The Windows Sidebar allowed you to add something called gadgets to your desktop, like the CPU meter, clock, calendar, notes and this was one of my favorites. It kind of made taking notes super easy. Unfortunately, the service has been discontinued so you won't be able to use gadgets that connect to the internet like the weather gadget. But yeah, offline gadgets still work fine. Now, if you had bought the Ultimate Edition of Vista, then you would get something called Ultimate Extras which Microsoft released as sort of a reward for buying the most expensive version of Windows. And it included some really nice features like the Windows Dream Scene, some additional games and Windows sounds. And you could download and install these through Windows updates. So that is what we are gonna do. In my opinion, the best ultimate extra was the Windows Dream Scene and once installed, it would let you set any video that you had as a desktop wallpaper. Amazing right? The best part was it offloaded all of the video decoding to the GPU, leaving the CPU completely free for all your tasks. Man, these are the kind of features that I want to see on Windows 11, the ability to set a video as a wallpaper and something similar to the Windows sidebar. Oh, and how can I forget this? The Windows Media Center. Check this out. I still have the original Media Center remote from my HP desktop and it still works. So Media Center had this custom UI for TVs because smart TVs weren't around back then. So if you had your PC connected to your big screen TV, Media Center filled in the gap. 
And if your computer had a TV tuner card, you could actually watch and record live cable TV on your PC. In fact, my HP Media Center PC had one. I'll put a picture of it if I can find one. It was one of those analog TV tuner cards and it worked great for cable TV. It turned your PC into an awesome DVR recorder. You could easily record live TV, no problems. So yeah, media center PCs used to be a thing back in the day. And unfortunately, this feature was also canned with Windows 10. Man, so many cool features have been removed over the years, like Dream Scene, Desktop Gadgets, and the Windows Media Center. You can also access your Windows 10 or Windows 11 PCs remotely via Remote Desktop. Man, it is so trippy to see Windows 11 Desktop through Vista. Wow. And I have already shown you that you can access Windows 10 or 11 network shares through Windows Vista. And it also works the other way around. Windows 11 can connect to Windows Vista through Remote Desktop. So that just shows you how usable Windows Vista still is even after being unsupported since 2017. And this will also give you a rough idea of what's gonna happen to Windows 10 after its support ends in October of 2025. Now, unfortunately, the fun ends here. Vista, being such an old operating system, does have its limitations. The biggest one is that you will not be able to install new applications. Or, to be more specific, you won't be able to install the latest version of applications. For example, the latest version of Steam does not work on Vista. So, unless you have standalone copies of your games, you're not gonna be gaming on Vista. And this is something that you're gonna see with almost every popular app out there. You see, Vista's mainstream support ended in April of 2012 and extended support ended in 2017. And now it's the end of 2021. So it has been well over 9 years since the end of the mainstream support. And not to mention Windows 7 was quite popular by 2012. So naturally, app developers will stop making apps that are compatible with older version of Windows as it requires extra effort and money to maintain compatibility with an older operating system and newer operating systems like Windows 7, 8.1, and 10 have evolved considerably. So Vista's subsystem like the Windows installer may not have the set of features that are required to install a modern day application. And you're gonna see errors like these. Fortunately, you can still install all of the latest updates that were released for Vista up till 2017. So this will make your system a little bit more usable, but since automatic updates do not work anymore, you will need to use additional hacks to get automatic updates to work. I'll put a link down in the video's description to another video that I found on YouTube that shows you how to get the automatic updates working on Windows Vista. So this is how I was able to install all of the updates that were released for Windows Vista on this system in 2021. Also, one thing to note is that Microsoft has not released any new security updates post-2017 for Vista. So that makes your PC vulnerable to malware, viruses, ransomware, and malicious attacks. So keep that in mind if you still connect to the internet with your Windows Vista PC. But that said, I still think if you've got an old PC that still runs Windows Vista, it will make an awesome offline PC to play your music, watch videos, photos, and maybe play some old video games. And if you've got the home premium and the ultimate edition of Vista, you also get Windows Media Center. So that's fun. So, my first encounter with Windows Vista was when we purchased a new PC in late 2007 to upgrade from an old Pentium 4 Windows XP machine, a compact D32M desktop PC. Yeah, remember those? So that was the first time I got to try Windows Vista and honestly, my pre-teenage brain was blown away with what it was capable of. And I gotta say, back in 2007, the Aero Glass UI looked so futuristic and the 3D flip thing it did when you press the windows and the tab keys together, man, that was a whole different ball game. It was smooth fast and felt modern compared to Windows XP, and not to mention how much I enjoyed the Windows sidebar functionality. Another feature that I absolutely loved on Windows Vista was the Network and Sharing Center. It brought all of the networking stuff inside one single window. In fact, you can still find Network and Sharing Center on Windows 10. Also, some of the elements of Vista's Aero theme on modern day windows still exists, like the way it gives you previews of the open windows when you hover the mouse over the top. Bar and the transparency effects. 
But the thing is, unless you bought a new PC which already came with Vista pre-installed or cherry-picked the parts for your custom-built PC, things weren't so great. For example, driver compatibility was horrible at launch. The best example I can show you is with this Lenovo 3000 C100 laptop from 2006. This particular unit came with a Pentium M730 CPU with about 2GB of RAM and a 40GB hard drive. So pretty okay-ish specifications for the time. And because this laptop is from the year Vista came out, so naturally, you would expect this thing to run Vista flawlessly. Well guess what, the Intel graphics driver was not compatible with Vista nor with Windows 7. So, you will not be able to play videos on this and the Aero theme just refused to work. Moreover, Intel never released a driver which was compatible with Vista, 7 or Windows 10. And without a working graphics card driver, this laptop is pretty much stuck with Windows XP. So, imagine it is 2006, you spend your hard-earned money to buy a new laptop and couple of months later, you realize that it is not compatible with the latest version of Windows. All because of a silly driver compatibility issue. Man, that would have really sucked. I've actually made a video trying to run Windows 10 on this Lenovo laptop and it was kind of terrible, mainly because of the missing video card driver. But the thing is, that single core Pentium inside this laptop still managed to run Windows 10. Anyways, concluding thoughts. Setting aside all of the criticism that Windows Vista received, I still think this is a great modern day operating system. I personally never faced any issues with Vista on my HP Media Center PC back in the day. And I would say that Vista was a huge step in the right direction, especially the Aero UI. Not to mention that Vista laid the foundation for the best operating system of all time, Windows 7. So guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and if you have enjoyed, make sure to hit the like button and yeah, stay tuned for more videos like these. And I will see you next time.